Hello and welcome to the Script Case webinar. My name is Jamie Oates and I will be your host today. During today's session, we will be taking a look at the creation of a mechanics portal or a platform which can be used to manage uh, the clients, the inventory, the automobiles of a mechanic store, for instance, where you'll be able to then also manage the services and uh, the budget and so on of the projects that you'll be working on within such a um, store. Okay, so we will be starting off by having a look at the project itself. So this is what we're going to end up with by the end, by the time we finish today, which will be this login, maybe even a slightly different one, but we can basically just log in here. So if I log in to this platform, And then within the platform, we have then our parameters where we can manage the hourly agenda, which is then the hours, which then a client, for instance, brings their vehicle into the, into the store or the mechanic shop. And then you will basically schedule them at 11 o'clock or 11.30 or whichever other time there is. And then the days and so on are then also registered for the appointment of such, um, arrangements. Okay, so then we also have the stages, which is where we then can manage the appointment requested, for instance, if it's confirmed, if it has been cancelled and so forth. We also then have the inventory, which then manages all the uh, parts for our cars. So of course, this is like, we're going to change this anyway, because you have your own parts. So I've left this as it was, there was no point in me providing translations for these, as it would be essentially your own inventory. We also then have the services, which is the same again. So all these services, which is then which are then provided to your uh, client, which would then be listed here. So for instance, here we have the direction, suspension, lubrication, and so forth, which then again would then be customized and managed by yourself. So all of these details that you see here would then essentially change, and we would look at that as we then create the project. We then also have the tasks. Okay, so we then have the tasks and we can set them as active or not active. And then we can actually also apply that to the um, work, which has been then requested by the customer. So for users, we have then a customer list where we can then manage our customers, we can send them emails, we can activate them or deactivate them. And we also have a coordinators list, where we can do the same thing again, we can then manage the coordinators of the platform. Operators we also have, which we can then also include within the project if we wanted to. We do have them here within the list and available within the database, but we're not actually using these within the project, so to say. Okay, so vehicles, we have a long list of brands. So we have a long list of vehicle brands here, which would then be selected within the project. We then also have of vehicle models associated with said brands. And then we also have a list of the client vehicles, which then includes the plate number, the brand, the model, and at the same time, if it is active. So for tasks, we can view all of the tasks as well as the appointments which have been requested or confirmed or ended, as in the project has been completed. And then from here, we can then manage said appointments. So we're gonna have a further look at this as, as we go along. So don't worry too much. I'm just gonna skip over what's available within this project. And then we can have a closer look at exactly what it does. So you have here the formats and we have the appointments and execution. Okay, so these are appointments that are ongoing for admin basically. So these are basically the admin forms. We have then the finished quotations. If I scroll, scroll along here, we can see that we have pending tasks or that we are short on inventory and so forth. Okay, so the next up we have then also the coordinator tasks. So we can see here a list of tasks associated to coordinators. So the security we have also available. I'm not going to go through this. This is the typical group security module included within script case. So this is then what is applied. And we then do make some customizations to this so that we can have our employees log in and also use the platform to register the observations as well as the 
progress of said appointment. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the options that we have here. So the parameters, I think these are pretty much standard. We have here the hourly agenda, stages, inventory. So here, for instance, inventory, we can come here and add a new inventory item. And so say if I say here, for instance, it is a wheelbase. Now, I don't know nothing about cars, I'm afraid. So I don't even know exactly what kind of parts we would have there. So I'm just going to go along with an idea of that I have. So I can then select whether it is active or not, i.e. available for selection within the platform. I can then add that and that is then added in, into our inventory list. OK, so I go here to the end of our inventory. We then now have our wheelbase, which I just added as well as the active status. So for the services, it's pretty much the same thing. We can add a new service. So I'll go ahead and do that. And we can say here, let's just say it's a basic wash uh, with soap <laughs> and water. OK, so pretty basic. And then we can add in here a description of the service. We can include a public price or the um, defined price and then the public price at which we will be providing it to the client. OK, so I have included in here also a calculator. because I think in such cases, sometimes it's good to have this there. And then we can actually go ahead and calculate the costs as well as the taxes and so forth. And then just have the price inserted without having to grab a calculator on the side. So we also then have the date price. So when the next services and we have some help fields here. If I open that up, we have here the service days in and out of duration. And we have then also the service minutes, and that is then the duration of service. We have here also the option to enable and disable or place as active or inactive. And we can also add an image for this service. So if I cancel that for now, we have here then also the edit. So we can just go ahead and edit the information. And notice on the service minutes, we also have here a slide bar. So we can actually just slide that along and then provide indication like so. So I go back again, I'm just going to cancel that. OK, I want to continue. And then we also have here a detail view, which is where then we have here the image displayed, as well as all of the information regarding the service provided. OK, so then we have the tasks. And again, if I go add new here, it's very similar to the previous one where we just add our description and specify whether it is active or not. OK, so then for users, and customers, for instance, again, we can add here a new user or view the user information. And we have all the fields here available. So if I, for instance, add a new user here, now I'm going to call him Santa. I always like to use Santa. And then I'm going to say Santa at clause.com. And then we can specify here the country that they are in. So if I say, for instance, he's in Mexico, he's from Mexico, or we are in Mexico. And then we have the documents associated with that country added. OK, so not all of the country documents are added. Again, depending on your country where you are located, you will for sure want to add your own documentation in here and specify what is required for your country. And then you can manage that accordingly. And as you see here from the drop downs, it is then applied when as and when needed. So we can include here the customer documentation, two phone numbers, the customer address, their phone number, as well as their gender. OK, so then we can view their information also. And again, we edit, we come to the edit form. OK, so next up, we then we have the coordinators. So this is pretty similar to the customers, just without the active field. And again, here we can uh, track the information regarding our uh, coordinators on property which then manage, for instance, the clients or the tasks provided to the employees or vice versa. OK, so operators is also the same as the uh, coordinators. So I won't bother going over this. There's no need to see that twice. For the brands, now you should pretty much have all the brands in here already. If not, we can always just add a new one and add a new brand. And then if I add Volkswagen, for instance, OK, now it's added already, but it's more than likely under a slightly different name. So if I come here, there we have Volkswagen, OK, and we have added Volkswagen again. So this is a mistake and we will be looking at this as we then continue within this project. So when we see here that we have a duplicate, now this should not be allowed. 
So we will make sure that this is then corrected as we continue within this project. So if I then select a 50, I can come down here and actually just delete that one again. And we can make sure that it is also capitalized and so forth. So let's make sure we uh, apply that as we then continue within this project. So for the models, it is gonna be the same way again. We can add a new model. We can then select the brand of the car and then we can insert a new model number. Once we add the new model, it will then also be included here within this list. So for the client vehicles, if I select that, I can add here a new vehicle. And then within that, we have here the customers which are located within our database already. So we would need to select the customer or add a new customer for such a car. Enter the plates, we can select the brand. So if I select here, for instance, BMW, we are then presented with the model IDs of said brand. We can also include uh, model information further and select here the color of the car. Now the colors here are also customizable, which we will have a look at as we create the project. We also have the option here to set it as active or not. And we have a tab here with additional information, which we can then tr track regarding uh, the customer's car which in this case, we can select a body style, we can include the engine number, the chassis number, a serial number, as well as what kind of service is provided. Again, this is an option that can be customized, as well as the cylinder capacity and the fuel type. Okay, so with then the customer appointments, we can see here that we can, we can view further information regarding the appointment. We can see the customer name, we can select the car that they are associated to, as well as then select a service, the price, start date, start time, as well as the stage of the appointment. So then we can make adjustments here according to our needs. And then we can add new tasks for our clients within our mechanic store. So we also have here the formats. And as I, as I mentioned, these are more for the admin. So for the formats, we just have this one here highlighted. And if I come here to the finished quotations, which is where we have more or less a, a larger view here with the tasks pending and the short on, short on inventory. And if I come here, I can view the details and see all of the information in one go. Now we then also have the coordinator tasks and then viewing the coordinator tasks, I can select here the format button and that will then open our form, which is then we can from here, see the suggested start date, the suggested end date. We can select the uh, vehicle inventory. We can indicate task details as well as the information what has been performed by the operator. Okay, so I wanna go back again. And then the final option we had was the security, of course. Okay, so that is pretty much the project we will be building today. And it will be quite a quick one. And it is quite an, a simple one. Um, compared to some of the previous courses we have put together. Okay, so let's make a start then. And what we'll first of all do then is have a quick look at the database. So here within script case, I will then first of all come here to the database. And as you see, we have none here available. So I need to enter the project first and then we can check out the database. So let's first create our project. And I'll create a blank project. And I will call this one mechanic. Okay, I will also add an icon. And what I will do here for the image manager here, I will select project and then icons. And then I will upload here an icon that I have available. So I select files. We'll open up my file explorer. I can come then to my desktop, which is where I then have the icon stored. And there we go. So I select that one. It will then be added to our project. And now I can select it and add it. And it will be used as the icon for this project. So I can add further information for the description or additional project information if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it blank and you could do that yourself if you want to. So going next, we can then select the database. And I'm using a MySQL database. And from here, we can then select the or enter a name for the connection type provide the server IP address or the host name, as well as the port. We can also select here the type of MySQL driver we want to use for the connection. And then we can enter our username and password. Once you've done that, you can click here the list database 
and it should connect to your database as it has done here. And then you can select the database that you have available. So the one I'm using today is the DB underscore automobiles. So I'll select that and then test the connection. If the connection is successful, it will be indicated if there are any errors or issues at all, you will also be notified. So do go ahead then and make the required adjustments so that you can connect to your database and continue with the project. Okay, so going next, I'm only going to apply English this time around. So I will leave it as English, regional settings, English, and the character set, I will use UTF-8. And it will be the default as it's the only language available. So again, I will go next. And now here we can select the theme that we want to use this for this project. So today I'm going to use the SC9 Blueberry. So I will select this theme. I will then also use it as default. And I'm going to remove the sweet blue to save on space within the project. If you want to have multiple themes, you can apply multiple and then you can also include the theme selection within your project if you wanted to. So for this project, I'm just gonna use the single theme and then go create. Okay, so now our project is created. I'm going to start off by having a look at the database. So if I come up here to database, we can have here SQL builder, database builder, and ER diagram. So I'm gonna come here to SQL builder and from here we can create our SQL select from the database that we have added. So this could be handy in many cases. Thankfully, we won't be using this today, but in your own situation, you may want to create some customized SQL queries for some of the forms that we are building or even for extra applications that you want to include within this project. So then we have also the database builder, which from here we can check out the database which we have included. So we have here then the database with all the tables and we can see here MySQL, the IP address that we are connected to, meaning the host or the host name, as well as then the database name. So below that, we can then make changes here, alter database, database scheme, as well as privileges. But we really just wanna have a look at this today and see what we have within each of these tables. So you may already know the sec apps, sec groups, sec group apps, sec logged, sec users, sec user groups, which are all part of the security module included within script case. So when you generate your security, you have the option of either pre well, reusing original tables, which is what we will do today, or we could delete these tables and have the module recreate them from scratch. Okay, so starting off with the table appointments. So we have here within the appointments, we have here the service, the start date, the start time, the customer ID, the stage ID, the service ID, the car ID, the system date time, as well as the price. And we then also have car brands, which is then where we have all of our car brands located. And we just have an ID there and then the car brand. Now within the car models, we have then the ID model, the model, and then the ID brand, which associates this table to the car brands and then allows us then to do the selections that we have within the project and automatically provide the next follow-up indication, i.e. from brand to model. Okay, so car X customer, we have here then the table which provides all of our customer vehicle information. So we have here, first of all, the ID for car, the plates, so the number plates or registration number, uh, the engine number, the chassis number, the serial number, the color of the car, the car service, cylinder capacity, the fuel type, the body style, the model, the customer ID, and the model ID. And then we also state whether it is active or not active. Then we have the coordinator table. So here we can manage or list our coordinators that we have within our within our company. So here we have then the number of the documentation that they provide us, their name, their birth date, a phone number, the country that they are from, their user's login, as well as then the document and country association, which we'll have a look at that in a moment. It 
where we have here the table country documents. So for countries, we have then just the ID and the list of country names. Now for the country documents, we have then the ID country document, the document type, and then again, the ID country associating this table to the countries table. So again, this allows us then to provide such drop downs and faster navigations within our project. We then have the customer table. So here we manage then our customers. We have again, very similar to the um, coordinator table. As we have here pretty much the same information, we have an extra phone number as well as uh, the gender and birthday, I believe. So then we have the format inv task. So here we have then the management of the tasks which have been provided by the employees. So here we then track the observations that they have made during their work on the vehicle, the vehicle mileage, the car ID, associating this to the um, car table. So here the car's customer table, responsible staff, the coordinator staff, the appointment ID, the service ID, as well as then the service applied, the customer ID, the start date and end date, as well as the suggested start and end dates. So for the inv inventory table, we have then simply an inventory ID, the item, and then if the item is active or available within our inventory. The inventory format, we have here the ID inventory format, the ID for the inventory, and then the appointment ID. So then we have the services table, where we then have the service ID, the service defined, so the service name, the description of the service, the actual price, and then the public price. So the price that we are charging to the end client. Whether it is active, we have a date price, so we can indicate when this price was added, the days till next service, the total service minutes, as well as an image, which we can then also include. So for the staff table, again, this is very similar to the coordinators. We have here staff number document, the name, birthday, one phone number, the country ID, the user's login, as well as then the country slash document relationship. So for stages, we just have the stage ID and stage info. For tasks, we have the task ID, a description, and then whether that task is active. Now for task format, we have the ID task format. We associate it to the task table with ID task and also to the appointment table with appointment ID. We then also have times appointment. So here we just track days and times available for appointments that our customers can book um, their vehicle into our store. So at the bottom here, we also have free view tables. And now we use these so that we ensure that the above tables are then not uh, changed. And within the view, we then collect all of the data from the other tables that we have just viewed. And then we present that information to the end user. So this then allows us to split the access to the, to the database or functionality to add, edit, and so on, and only provide a basic view or an overview of relevant tables. So here for appointments, we have the start date, the start time, the customer ID, the customer name, their phone number, the customer email address, the ID stage, as well as info for that stage, the service ID, as well as the service information and description. We have the actual price and public price. If the appointment is active, days until next service, as well as the service minutes applied to the vehicle, the car ID, the license plate numbers, the brand ID, as well as the brand model ID, and also the model. And we also include the system date time. For the CarX customer, we are collecting here the customer information as well as then the car model and brand information. So here we have the customer name, the customer ID, the customer number document, the customer's phone number and address, as well as the email address. We have the car ID, the license plates, the ID of the model, the model, the brand, and the ID of the brand. And again, we specify an active status. 
For the general service format, so here we track a great deal of information regarding various, the service, the brand of the car, some of the coordinator information, the customer information, and basically what's been happening with the vehicle while it has been within our store. So we have here, first of all, the ID for the format inv inventory task. We have a service, the service name, the public price, the observations, the car ID, the plates, the license plates of the car, the brand ID, and the brand title, the model ID, as well as the model title. We have the mileage, and we have the responsible ID stamp. I should uh, mention mileage is also kilometers, so the amount of distance that one has traveled within the vehicle, so it would be the clock. Uh, we have then the staff numbers, uh, the document numbers, the staff name, the coordinator ID, again, the coordinator's document number, the coordinator name, the appointment ID, as well as then when the appointment started, when it ended, and when the start and end date was suggested. We have then the customer ID, the customer name, and also the customer email. So that is the database we will be working on today. This should also be available for you to download within the comments, as well as the project. So if you go ahead and download the project as well as the database, you can create the database, or sorry, add the database yourself within your MySQL management or PHP MyAdmin or whatever you're using to insert that. And then you can start to create your project and follow along during the next few videos. Alternatively, import the project and check out some of the code and um, connections used within the project and learn this way. Okay, so we're gonna then go ahead and make a start in our project. Okay, so I'm gonna start off then first of all with application and batch applications. So this will then allow us to create multiple applications in one go. So I'm gonna start off here with the table countries where I will use a form and grid, also country documents. And then we have here also stages and then we also want times appointment. Okay, so for times appointment, we want the form and grid. For stages, we only want a form. Uh, country documents, we can keep the form and the grid also. And if I now go next, I can now adjust the title of the application I'm generating. I can also include a description and I can change the type of form that I want to generate. So instead of selecting the type of form that you want to be using within your project once it's created, you can select it here on the batch applications and have them generated as a single row, multiple rows, editable grid or editable, editable grid view straight away without having to make those adjustments when you come in. So I'm gonna apply that here for the table stages. And here, for instance, if I select editable grid, and then I'm going to select here to edit and finish. Now Scriptcase will generate each of the applications I've just selected, and it will now open each of them ready for me to make the changes within said applications. Okay, so now that they're all generated and open, let's start off here with the grid TB times appointment that we just created. I'm going to remove here the search, detail, summary, and chart. We'll only need here the grid. And I'll leave the table width as 100%. And if I then come here to the edit fields, I will go ahead and remove here the ID, leave the date and time. And if I go ahead and run that, we can have a quick look at what this grid looks like. Okay, so there we have then the day as well as the time. We have here also the edit option. So once this form has been generated, so I generate this form, then we will also have that available here. And if I run the grid again, and now click the edit button or even add new, it then takes us to the form that we have also just generated. Now note that when we use the batch generation as we have just done, and we select a form and a grid, that the link between the two applications is automatically created, which is what we have here. This is why we have here now the edit 
and the add new buttons. So generally, if you only create a grid, you will not have those available until you link the grid application with a form. Okay, so then from here, we don't need a lot of these toolbar options. So I'm going to go ahead and remove a load of these. I'll come down here, I'll leave the export. And then here I will remove all these options also. And column sorting options and group by. Now I believe I just removed the button there also, which we actually want to keep. So on the left hand side here, I can scroll down and I can see here the form buttons and I can re-add that again. And what I'll do is adjust that up. And here the export, I'm going to move that up also. So that's in the center. Okay, so if we go ahead and run that again, we should see that we have now the export here, the add new button and exit button. We just have a line there, so we could remove that here, which is here. So if I select that and JSON, we don't need those. And then we can go run again. And now we will have no more line there. We have all our export options. And of course we could adjust those also if we only want to export to PDF, Excel, XML and so forth. Then we just need to remove those options and then it will be updated within our application. Okay, so ideally for mobile, we can copy that from, from the desktop version and that will then also be applied to the mobile view of said application, okay? Okay, so if I just check our grid one last time, we can run it again. It looks good. We have our edit feature here. We're gonna cut now come to the form shortly and we don't need any other options here. So we can leave this one as it is. And I'm gonna leave it open for now because sometimes if we close these applications after generating a source code, it can sometimes close some of the other applications that we have open. So just to continue, I'll leave them open for now. And again, here within the country documents, I will remove all of these options. We again, just need the grid. I will leave it as 100% and then come to the edit fields. And again, here for the edit fields, I will remove here the main ID and then we have the document type and the country. So I'm going to adjust those so the ID of the country is above. We can then change the uh, wording. So we have country and document type. Now if I save that, we can also select here straight away that it, this will be a select field or whatever else when we come to the form. But here for the grid, we can leave it as an integer. And then what we want to do then for the field is on the fields here, if I zoom in a little, here on fields, ID country, we have here the integer, and then scroll down a little, we can apply here the lookup method and select here automatic, and then we can create a select, and then now we select the table countries and indicate that the field country will be shown. We can click then the yes button, select our connection, and now if I run that, we will now see that the country IDs will all have the country names. Okay, so we can make further adjustments here and of course align, for instance, now the country here is aligned here to the right. So I'll change that to the left and now I can run that again and it's a little cleaner here already. Okay, so again, we can make adjustments here to the toolbar. So if I go ahead and do that, come here to the toolbar and we can then move here the buttons that we have here or the exports and so forth. Just move them out, move the columns, run it again, and then we have our grid. Okay, so on this grid as well as the previous one, I didn't actually change the title, so let's go ahead and do that. So if I come here to layout and I come here to header and footer, I will remove the date and then here I can adjust the title or I can apply language keys as we've seen in previous videos and have uh, multi-language titles or super long titles applied by using the data dictionary. So in this case, we're just gonna type in the name country documents and then I'll save that. And then that is our next grid finished. So I'm gonna return back here to the previous grid here that we had, which was then here the times appointment and also come into the layout, header and footer and again, remove the date and adjust the time here. Times, uh, appointment times. 
makes more sense. Okay, and I will save that. I can run it again and we can see that now the title has changed and also here for the country documents, which is then also the same country documents. Okay, so on to the next grid, which is then here the countries list. Again, I will remove the search, details, summary and chart and again, leave it as 100%. We can edit again here the fields and as it's just countries, I'm going to leave the ID here and we can just go ahead and run it. And we have then our list of countries with the IDs. Okay, so we may <clears throat> want to make adjustments to the ID, for instance, we could then also, as previously, move this over to the left-hand side instead of having it on the right, and it would make a difference within our application. And we can also make adjustments to the toolbar again. And remove all these options that are not needed. And then we can go ahead and run that. Okay, so we're just gonna apply here the title. We do have here the edit also. Again, the form has not been generated yet, so we will come to that in a moment. So first of all, let's come here to layout, header and footer. I will remove the date again, and here, country list. Okay, and then we can save that. Okay, so then the next form we have, well, the first form is here the times appointment, which is linked to the grids appointment. So we have this as a single record, I'm going to come here to edit fields, remove here the ID, if I save that, and then we can go ahead and run the form, and we can see now we have a slightly cleaner layout. And let's make some further adjustments, so if I come here to settings, I will select here the input width to 100%, and then here in layout, and first we're going to change the header and footer, so I don't forget, Change here the title. Get my spelling right, appointment times. And then here within blocks, I'm going to make an adjustment here with the label and move the position of the label to above. Now if I go ahead and run that form again, we will now have something like so. Okay, so we're gonna make some further adjustments here. First of all, back to settings and let's change here the table width to pixels and select 600 pixels. And we then also want to change the time displayed here. So if I come back down here to fields and then select the time field, I can select here the date display position and I'm going to move that to below. Now if I then go run again, we have a smaller form and it is a little cleaner than previously. Okay, so that's our first form ready. Now we need to apply the same here to the stages. So let's quickly go and do that. So stages, again, here if I run this, first of all, we have this as an editable grid. Okay, so here we have the option of making changes within the selection straight away. And then if we do, so if I change here, appointment needed to capital A, I can say that, save that. And here also, appointment confirmed, and save that also. Now and then this, you see here that the data has been modified and so forth. And this is one of the nicest forms there, I think. So we're gonna use that here for the stages. So the first thing I want to do then is again, change here the width of the form. We really don't need it to be this wide. So again, we're gonna select here 600 pixels. Okay, and then here for sorry, edit fields. And I'm going to drag here the ID stage out of the way. We don't need that. And then we can also adjust the title of the application. So come here to layout, header and footer. I will remove the date again. And here I will just write stages. And then run that. And that is our next form then completed and ready. Okay, so we have then the country documents. So again, settings. And here again, I'll go 100% width. I will change again to 600 pixels. Okay, and we can come to edit fields. I'm going to drag here the country ID or the country document ID out of the way. I will move the country up. And then we can save that. Actually, you want to change here the title country. 
save again. And then here on the fields, if I come to ID country, we will want to move that again to the left hand side. Oh, we're actually in the form now, aren't we? So let's go ahead and run that and check it out. Okay, so then we have the country ID and the document type. So here for the integer, we actually want to change this now for a select so that we can select the country and not enter an ID number. Um, so, okay, let's check that here. I don't know why you've got a checkbox, select, okay. We must enter data to complete the data type selection. Yes, of course I do. So we have down here, if I scroll down, we have again the lookup settings and we'll have this as automatic. If I create the select and I can select here again, the countries table leave the country as selected, select the connection that we are using for this, and I will also use a title. So this will provide us then a blank field within the select menu. So if I go ahead and run this now, we now have a drop down menu with all of the countries. And if I go add new, we have no country selected, and then we can select it. Okay, so then we have here our final form for this video, which is then the countries form. So here I will come to settings again, we'll change the width to 600, select pixels, I will also use the inputs 100% width, and let's go ahead and run it and check out where we are. Okay, so here we have then the country ID and then the country. So why don't we go ahead and change this form. Instead of having a single record, let's again also go for an editable grid, or as they are countries, maybe even an editable grid view. So let's check that one out. We now then have the editable grid view. We don't really need the country. So if I come here to edit fields again, I'm going to drag the ID country out of the way. Now I'm not going to do that here. Let me jump here to the fields positioning because this is an alternative method of moving elements around. I just have such a big habit of using edit fields all the time, but then in some cases using the fields positioning is a much faster way or easier way even just to move a field out of the way. Okay, so one other item, if we check here, was here then also the title. So if I come back here to layout, header and footer, remove the date, and then here we type in then country list. Sorry. Country list. Or oh, countries even. There you go. Countries, we do. Just type it. Okay, and then if I go ahead and run again, we now have our country list all nice and ready to go. Okay, so for the next part, we can actually go ahead and, well, let's check out first of all these grids and make sure all these forms are good. So we have here the term times appointment, first of all. If I run the grid, if I click the edit, we open the form correctly. If I click add new, we open the form correctly. And then we could do the same thing here for the country documents as well as then the countries. So we go add new, I can add a new country document type. I can even select the one that we have there. And then we also have the same with the countries. So if I run that also, we can confirm again, we can edit the country and we can also add new countries. Okay, so even for the countries list, if you notice that we have that grid and then also for the edit, we've actually gone ahead and created a different type of countries list here. So what we could do within our project is remove the grid countries. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in a moment. Let's first of all, close all of these applications that we have open. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to delete the countries grid that I created and just keep the form instead. Okay, so of course this will reduce size of the project and also simplify some of the steps. Okay, so now we have our base applications ready. I'm going to go ahead now and create first of all our folder structure. So we have first of all our customers folder. So I create that. I'll come back to root and then we have our vehicle or automobiles I'll call it folder and back to root, create the next folder, and this one, zero free services, create that, and back to root, and this time I'm going to create zero four, which is the appointments, and 
back to root. And now I will create the 05 employees. Okay, so from there, we need one more folder here, admin. So I'll create that. And then also within the employees folder, I will create one extra folder here. And here, I'm just gonna call that emp and serviced, okay? Okay, so now we have our base applications ready. We also have our folder structure ready. So within the next video, we will continue with this project and complete some further applications so that we can see how this project is put together and then also customized. And we can then also make some further changes to it as we continue on within the next few videos. So I hope to see you again in part two of this script case video. And I will be back again shortly. Thank you very much for watching.